Hi, this is Chris Hoy. Thank you for joining me on Create with Chris for this acrylic painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to easily paint this rustic Christmas wreath using a palette knife. Step by step, start to finish. So let's get started. If you are a beginner or just looking for something different, fun, and fresh to create, you're going to love this technique. I used regular bottle acrylic paint, not the thick tube acrylic, a couple of palette knives, a stencil, and a stencil brush. This is such a different technique, and if you've never used a palette knife before, it is really something you need to try. I'm using the very flexible, thin, inexpensive palette knives because the paint is so thin, it's really easy to manipulate it with this, uh, the flex in the knife. I am using four different shades of green and the palette knife I chose has a rounded tip on it, which makes it really easy to follow the contour of the leaves. Basically, I'm loading the palette knife by just sliding it flat across a puddle of paint. Just a small amount of paint is on the flat of the brush and then just scooting it over the leaves. Now, you're not needing to worry so much about smoothing it out or getting it nice and even. We're just basically laying on and, and this is a rustic wreath, so we're just basically laying on the background. And I found out as I went around the wreath that you kind of get the hang of what works best for you. I'm just kind of scooting the knife back and forth, making sure that it's not overloaded because I don't want to have big piles of paint on the surface. If it's not so heavy, it's going to dry quickly, but yet there's enough paint on there that I can work other colors in it. I did start in one place and then work down so that the leaves are laying over top of the prior leaves. And that way, it's just a really, a, a more natural way to create the leaves so that they they look like they're laying as as they would if you would create the wreath so one leaves on top of the next i pretty much started out with the darker green uh, this is hauser dark green kind of uh, toggled between the hauser medium green and the hauser light green in my mind i thought it should be darker toward the center of the wreath where the middle branch and the leaves are connected, becoming lighter towards the tips. So I'm just kind of scooting the paint over. And as it dries, there may be a few open areas that are not covered particularly well. That's something that I wasn't too concerned about at this point. I'm going to go back and add uh, layers of paint don't try to get it perfect the first time over. We're just working to get color on it and not really overworking the areas. And you can see that if you rub it too hard or work too long in one area, it just blends together and, and becomes one color. You want to try to stay away from that. Little bit of paint, light touches, it's just amazing what this palette knife texture will create. So let the knife do the work. If you're used to working with a paintbrush and this is a new experience, enjoy it because it is very different. Don't let it get frustrating. It's not difficult. Don't try to force the colors. Let the palette knife create these really unique shapes and designs within the leaf. It's almost like a variegated leaf that would just absolutely take hours with a brush. So you can see I go in and kind of slather on the base coat and then I go back the two lighter colors 
our celery shoot and foliage green using those to brighten up more so the tips of the leaves so toggling between the hauser dark pretty much more at the base of the leaves the bottom side the stem area picking up that color to get a good uh, start of the leaf on there and you can see how I just kind of scoot it around uh, to spread it out and then I'm adding some Hauser medium green to kind of blend in and you can pull them together it doesn't have to be perfectly blended but just kind of scooting those colors together and then grabbing a little bit of a lighter color to touch up the tips and don't try to add too much brightness at this point once the entire wreath is covered it's so much easier to go back and balance out those bright areas but it's just fun to add it in it just takes such a little bit of paint and it may look like i'm applying a lot of paint but you can see i have a very small puddle and i'm just going back and forth and picking up a little more here and a little more there this color that color and working it in so just enjoy playing with color and do what makes sense darker toward the middle toggle between the hauser light and the um, hauser dark green if it becomes too dark after it dries that's when you go back and add some brightness to it it's just such a simple technique and it, it, it's something that should be a fun, enjoyable time. So, you know, I, I felt much comfortable, more comfortable after I did about half the wreath. And then I thought, oh, yeah, I know what I'm doing now. So it's just a super fun way to add the color in there. I'm a big brush painter, so this was a little out of my comfort zone. I knew in my mind what I wanted it to look like, and I was kind of getting super excited as it started to pan out and create even more amazing color than what I had anticipated. I think one of the comforts of using a palette knife is that there is nothing that can't be fixed. It, you can always go back and touch it up. So go ahead and play with it and just see what happens. Remember that it works best to keep the palette knife flat when sliding it through the paint on the palette. When applying it to the actual surface, and don't be afraid to let it create texture. That's one thing that really adds a lot to this technique as well, is having a little bit of texture in it. So not smoothing it out perfectly flat will create some very interesting texture that translates as really nice um, 
design on the leaves. So each leaf will look the same but have its own design, which is very interesting. Here I just slather in that or scrape in that Hauser Dark, and then go back with the Hauser Medium to just kind of create that nice base background. And just a little touch of a little bit of paint makes such a big difference. And you can create the leaves laying on top of each other. Don't make them flat. Put some in the middle as well as on each side. And there's areas in the wreath. Just if it if it's a big thick area in the middle, add a leaf there. It's very easy to create that look of fullness. And it's going to really make a very nice full wreath. Make sure to keep your paint fresh. If the paint starts to dry up on the palette or you're scraping through partially dried paint, it's not going to smooth out well and it's going to not apply well. So make sure that you... I have small puddles of paint that I just refresh as needed. Putting a little bit of that Celery shoot on the tips just looks so pretty. Almost finished. And I can tell when I get around to where I started that I've not changed my technique, but it has become a little easier to apply. So as I get back to where I started, I'm just going to continue to blend it together and where I started is dry by now. So I can just work those in and make them look very much more similar. You want your you don't want it to look like there's a place where you stopped and started. You need it to blend together very very nicely. Now I'm just going back to see which tips of the leaves are a little bit dull and putting some bright color on, whether it be foliage green or a celery shoot, just trying to add some brightness to the leaves. Definitely don't want them to look each the same, but that's the beauty of using a palette knife. It's really difficult to make everyone identical because the knife just applies the paint on so uniquely. And if there's any texture on the leaves that have dried, as you slide the palette knife across, the texture is going to pull a little more paint off and create even more unique design. Now, I painted the berries, and after I painted them, I realized the camera wasn't on, so I flipped them over, and I'm painting the back side. When I painted them, it's really hard to hold on to these little pieces, and I found out that using a stylus to hold them in place was much, much easier. And I am using watermelon slice. Not, not a lot of paint. I had too much on my knife with this one. I had to wipe excess off. But I'm just putting pretty much a base coat of watermelon slice on each of the berries not smoothing it out. I'm just laying it across the berry. So there is texture to it, but it's not real thick and it's not real solid and it's not real heavy so that it allows me to use the palette knife to add layers of color, which not only creates the dimension of the berry, but adds that texture as well. Now I am applying tomato red and I did drop down to a smaller tipped palette knife because I have a smaller surface I'm working on. I want the top part of my berries to be a little bit brighter so I'm applying the tomato spice or tomato red pretty much like two-thirds of the berry and leaving the top side a little bit lighter. And this is just going to give me a nice red berry. I didn't want a pinkish berry. So it just allows me to brighten it up and be more of a holiday Christmas 
red. I do have a total of 12 berries. Going back, I want to brighten that top side and it's easier to work if I turn the berries around using the bright salmon to just apply some brightness to the tops of those berries. And because the paint is still wet, I can blend it in if I want or I can leave it heavy. So take a look at it as you apply it. It's kind of a personal preference. There were a couple times where it was too solid and heavy, so I did go back and blend it just a touch. But I'm just using, see how dark that is? I can go back and just soften it down. And I can even go back with tomato red and tone it down as well. But I knew I wanted to have some brightness in there and some really strong shading. So I thought I would let it, I'm just kind of tapping it, let it uh, dry just a little bit to see what they look like before I softened them too much. That one was really heavy. So I'm just tapping it down a little bit with that tomato red. It has a nice light and dark on it. Try to keep them, the light areas pointing in the same direction. It's a little less confusing. I'm taking some deep burgundy and I'm just applying it around the side and the bottom to, to create more shading. Just really turned out fantastic. I loved how it looked. And it was so easy to do. And it, it just gave that almost impressionistic effect. And it, it just looks perfect with the wreath. I should have had my stylus because when you stick your finger in it, you run the risk of pulling some paint off. And you can see I just lightly touch it and there's not much paint on my um, palette knife. So I can really work it and lay it in where I want it to, to go without worrying about getting too much on there. Don't overload. You can always go back and get more. And it's so easy to overload because you, if you don't pull it flat through the paint, you'll just get a, a pile of paint on the bottom of the palette knife, which is you don't want heavy paint. You just want to keep that very light and just add touches of paint. Even going back and adding a second coat is better than trying to get too much on the first time. And once they dry, it's very easy to see if you need to go back and touch up, but I think it really turned out there was a little bit of uh, brightness was not on that one. Just to go in and tap it in, there's not much brightness on that one. Just add a little bit more. So much easier than trying to tone it back down or cover it up. Now I am using my uh, heat tool to, to give it a quick dry. The paint is a little bit thicker. I kind of like that effect on it. Um, so it does take a little bit longer to dry. When I use my heat tool, it's going to dry the top layers. It's still going to be a little bit soft underneath, which is okay, because I'm just using very light touches of paint. And I know working with small pieces some, sometimes can be a little bit frustrating. But I did put a paper towel down, and it seemed to hold them in place much easier than my slick uh, surface. Now I have just a bit of Snow White that I'm going to pop on there to brighten those highlights. And it is just a little bit. You can see how much I had to work to get the paint to come off because 
I don't want to have to go back and redo all the berries. Gosh, look what a difference just that little bit of paint makes. Keep that flat touch. And in between each berry, I'm getting just a touch more paint on my palette knife. I don't have very much on there. Just enough for one berry. Just a, a flat slide through just a thin amount of paint is all that is needed. Ooh, that's too much. Try to spread that out, but I think I need to go back and tone that one down. But it's a super easy fix. I, I think that's what I really like about just take a little bit of paint to tone that down. I think that's what I like so much about this technique. It's so very easy to work with. Aren't those pretty? I just think they turn out fantastic. And on top of those leaves, they just really are perfect. I decided to paint the banner. I had no clue what I was going to do because in my mind, I'm thinking I need a brush to create the shading and um, that folding of the ribbon on the banner. I decided to start out with a base coat of sand gray. I love this color. It's just a really beautiful in between, not a bright white, but it just makes a beautiful medium shade color. And I decided since I'm doing the whole project with my palette knife, I would use the palette knife to just slide the paint across the surface of the banner. I think if you're working with a project such as this and using a palette knife uh, to create that look of texture, that if you switched over to a paintbrush to create this banner, it just wouldn't work well together. I decided to, the, the paint wasn't sliding across the surface smoothly, so I decided to let that work for me. So I'm just using the palette knife so that there's not any distinct like stop and start areas, but I'm using it to slide across. Light and dark, I decided would be okay. And I'm just really working the paint over the surface. And you can see there are light and dark areas. I did decide that the, the tail end, um, I did each, each section separately, if that makes sense. So I wanted that curve to have one look and then these uh, hanging tail ends will, will be a little bit different so that they look like they're flowing. So I didn't want the paint to go straight across. I did, you know, each section individually. And I kind of, I was really intrigued by that effect that that had by just using the palette knife to create that base coat. Giving it a quick dry so that I can lay another color on top of that without picking up uh, any of the underneath color. And this is the medium tone so I can easily go in and add the shading and the highlighting and still create that look of dimension that we're going for. Still using the palette knife, and I want to brighten this up, so I'm picking up a little bit of Snow White, still using that very same technique. Just going, decided to, I wanted to start in the middle of the banner so that I could kind of set those corner edges of that front fold using the toe of my palette knife to go in there and 
even though the palette knife is is not the same as a brush, you still have that ability to create those edges and straight lines very easily. And it's almost the same as spreading butter over a piece of bread. I do like those swipes across to be a little more continuous, so I'm trying to smooth it out. Now I still show texture, which is fine, but I just don't want short choppy strokes in. I can always go back and add another coat. I can always go back and touch it up, but you can see how this creates that center section and defines the outer edges. As long as it's still wet, you can move it around. It's really fun to work with. Brightening up the tips of the banner tails and just kind of pulling that paint in there. The tails are not as prominent, so they're not, I don't need those to be as bright as the center section plus the words are on the center section and you want a really good contrast with that as well. So even though it's not painted solidly you can really see the three defined sections. Just wanted to touch up that little spot. Really like that texture that it creates. Super pleased with how it turned out. Give it a quick dry. And remember the paint's a little bit thicker. I did speed that up, but after I it, the paint dried, because uh, white is a little bit translucent. As it dries, it's going to dry a little bit. Uh, it won't be as opaque. So to go back and brighten the tips of those tails, just going to ramp up that brightness a little bit. And the same for the center section. That's kind of the focal point of the banner. So I definitely want that to be bright. Again, it doesn't have to be smooth and perfect. We're going for that texture look. Just trying to brighten it up and even it out just a little bit. Picked up my stencil and you can hand letter this. You can put a name on there. You can um, personalize it any way you'd like. The stencil fit perfectly and I did anchor it down with a couple pieces of painter's tape. I've loaded my spectacular stencil brush with tomato red. Don't want this to be a real solid heavy stencil so I wiped my brush over a paper towel to remove the excess paint and I'm just lightly doing a circular motion to apply the paint over the stencil. If it's not dark enough, I can always go back and add another coat. Every time I load, I will wipe my brush over a paper towel just so I don't get that heavy paint. And that's going to eliminate that possibility that it's going to run under the edges of the stencil. And that's when you start to get that irregular edge instead of this crisp clean outline. I thought that might need a second coat but after it dried I like the way it looked. It's just a little bit um, not solid and heavy. I decided that it needed to be distressed a little more and I'm getting just ever so little paint on my palette knife and I'm just touching a little bit here and there. It looks like chipped paint, and I love that effect. Be careful that you don't put too much in any one place so that it makes the letters just a little bit hard to read. I ran the edge of my palette knife through the paint, and I'm using the sharp edge to create that line. It just works out perfectly. So create the line, and then I kind of use the flat of the palette knife to fill it in loved how that worked out. Sometimes you need a sharp edge just to crisp it up. Now I picked up a little bit of charcoal gray. This is a powerful color so it needs to be used gently and I got some on that 
straight edge of the palette knife and I ended up with a straight line which is not what I wanted so because the background is dry I just took a damp paper towel and just kind of wiped that off so it wasn't such a sharp line and you can see way too much paint so I wiped my palette knife off I'm just going to use the paint that's there to kind of slide it around this is a very strong color very good idea to have a dry background in case you need to go in and kind of touch it up but if you use a small amount of paint it's much easier to predict the outcome just play around with it that first couple applications of that dark color just seems so strong and intense but after I put on a little bit more. I'm starting to think that that's going to work out really well. I have just a little bit on the bottom of my palette knife, sliding it over the top and the bottom edges. That's going to add a little bit of a worn look to the banner. And also it gives it helps to define those edges. I let some of it slide across the top of the surface as well. Right in there where that fold is, there needs to be just a little bit of a shadow right there. And that helps it look like that's in that dark area where it's folded over. And I just add some of that on both sides of that banner to define those edges a little bit more. I thought that was a little bit too dark, so I just went back with Snow White to tone it down. It's just an easy fix. Brighten the tips up just a little bit more. And I wanted to sharpen that left side of the folded area. Just was a little bit undefined. This is the way it looks on the wreath. And what I decided after I put the Believe banner on the wreath, um, the brightness of the banner toned down the brightness of the highlights on the wreath. So I am going back with my palette knife using the celery shoot and I'm adding more highlights to some of the tips of the leaves and you can see how that's beginning to really brighten the wreath up. A little bit here, a little bit there. There's no wrong way to do it. If you're not sure, kind of squint at it and if you see some areas that just look really, really dull, then you can go back and just put a little bit of celery shoot on there to brighten it up.
think this is the most fun part where you can go in and I call it the fluff and puff where a little bit of paint makes a big difference. I love the way that it is becoming very dimensional. When I add those extra bright highlights, that dark area just recedes even that much more. And it's so easy to do with a palette knife. I hope you give this a try because it is so much fun. And it's kind of a wow factor what the palette knife will do. Just remember, a little bit of paint makes a big difference. And it's a big patience thing. So don't try to put more on the palette knife just to get it finished quicker. Just let it work. Now I did decide that I wanted to add a little bit of splatters of falling snow. I've loaded my splatter brush with Snow White and I'm just putting a light splatter over the entire wreath. The thinner the paint, the bigger the splatters. So you can control not only the size of the splatters, but I love the splatter brush. It's perfect. You have really good control over not only the size, but the location of where the splatters land. I love how it brightens up the wreath, and I like the effect of the little splatters, so I went ahead and added charcoal gray splatters to the banner as well. If you would like to give this a try, all the supplies are listed below. I think this would make a beautiful wreath for the holidays. Be sure to check out my other videos. And if you would, share, like, and subscribe to my channel. Remember to hit the bell so you won't miss out on future videos. I hope you learned a few new tips, tricks, and techniques to make your painting life a little easier and a lot more fun. Thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to our next painting adventure together.